So the biggest shortfall in people that we are hiring as cloud engineers is their lack of understanding of how an enterprise system works with a landing zone, whether that is on Azure or AWS. And what I want to talk about today is to make sure you have an understanding of how cloud engineering actually works at an enterprise level scale. Because whilst you're at home working on your small resource groups, you're playing around, you're testing, you're deploying, that doesn't actually replicate how a cloud environment looks like when you have thousands of users. Now I've chosen to do Azure because this is something that I presented to a company before when I was doing an interview, but there is minimal differences between Azure and AWS. A landing zone is still a landing zone and they have the same primary functions. Now a landing zone is pretty much just the cloud. It is a platform where your users can signal traffic to your resources and access them. But there's a few different moving components. One of those is going to be an identity account, a network management account, and then you're going to have a logging or audit account. Those are typically the free accounts or subscriptions if we're working on Azure. So let's take a look at what those actually mean. Now, as we can see here, we have a platform as a service, which is what a lot of companies like to call it. And that platform as a service is normally managed by a platform team of cloud engineers or DevOps engineers. Identity is where you're going to store your domain controllers. The next thing you'll have is your logging or management account. You may have dashboards. It's also for monitoring and log. You may have some people working on the billing team that may come in here and do some cost management. And then the next Next thing is actually your cloud network. Now when your cloud network, this is where you're going to be storing your DNS for your public facing load balancers or any other DNS features you may have. You may have a DDoS service set up. You're going to have your firewall in here because this is where inbound network traffic is going to be coming through. And more than likely, you're going to have some sort of writing facility like a virtual WAN to pair it to your web applications with their own virtual networks. On AWS, it's a little bit different. You'll have something called a transit gateway where you can configure your routing table. Now once you've actually designed and delivered your cloud landing zone. This can take several weeks depending on how, how big the client actually is. Let's say you're working for a consultancy, you have a FTSE 250 come up like Tesco's or Walmart for, for our US viewers and they say they want to adopt uh, a cloud migration, they want to go for a landing zone. The first part is design and discovery, right? You need to understand how big your network is going to be, how much redundancy is required. Now that sort of exercise is you're going to have many different people. You're going to have engineers, you're going to have consultants, solutions architects, scrum masters, project managers. That process may take a couple weeks, it may take several Several weeks. And let's say we've actually deployed all of this architecture, then we reach a stage where we're actually in a position to migrate an application. Now, just as an example on this one, I've used, gone for a free tier web application. Now, if you don't know what a free tier web application is, free tier is we have a front end, we then have an application end, and we then have a data end. So the front end is what the customer is going to see. The application layer is either going to be on something like a virtual machine or a Docker container. And then the data end is going to be where our database is. And it could be Postgres or SQL. So let's just, as an example, say we have a user, right? That user is going to come in to our network and hit our load balancer. This load balancer here is public facing because you can access it externally. This load balancer needs to be configured to distribute traffic over the correct ports. Now that traffic is then distributed between these virtual machines and the data stored in the database. Let's just say this is Facebook as an example. You'd call this Facebook. Your developers would commit all of their code to a DevOps repository and also your platform team. So your cloud engineers and your DevOps engineers will also be creating their own pipelines for Terraform. But everything that is actually deployed here, you wouldn't deploy that in the GUI. You would deploy that with infrastructure as code, whether that is Terraform or Bicep. Now I can appreciate that this is actually like super high level, but this is something that you really are going to get your head around if you want to work for a company that is fairly large. Now the next thing I think that we should talk about, which I have covered a little bit, is how teams actually work. A typical way of working for a platform team is you're going to have cloud engineers and DevOps engineers. And then you'll normally have something like a scrum master, a project manager, and a solution architect. The developers don't really talk to the DevOps engineers and the cloud engineers until they've configured a new feature, they require some new architecture that needs to be deployed and updated into a CI CD pipeline on Azure DevOps. Now let's say the developers create a new feature that needs to be pushed to production. They will speak to the DevOps engineers over here and say, hey, I have this new feature. Can you add it into the CI CD pipeline? It needs to go through a testing phase and a deployment phase. Now the dev developers may actually also speak to the cloud engineers and say, hey, I need some new architecture. I don't know how it works in the cloud. Can you please present me with a solution? So the solutions architect and the client engineers will then work together and they will automate the delivery of that architecture with Terraform. Then any work that comes out of that discussion is normally going to be put into something called a sprint, right? Now, depending on the frameworks that you're actually working to, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to have a scrum master. Now, a scrum master is non-technical and really they are just in charge of making sure the work gets done. So they'll be in charge of a Kanban board, 
assigning work out on that board, which is essentially tasks that need to be completed. So let's say you're deploying the architecture for this free tier web application, right? Every single step is gonna to have to be created as a task and that can be shared out between teams. So you may have someone who goes and creates the remote state, someone goes and creates the virtual network module. So you could have one engineer doing that task. These two other engineers could be working on a completely different project that needs to be delivered. So as you can see, it kind of paints a picture of how you're actually going to be working at scale. For a beginner, this is obviously quite overwhelming because because you're already learning how to do all of this. And then once you get thrown into the deep end, let's say you land your junior cloud position, this is all gonna hit you in the face. And this goes to, out to people who are already working in technology. Maybe you work in support or maybe you work on-prem. The idea of shifting that on-prem mentality, to how you're gonna be working in the cloud is completely different. And that is pretty much what large-scale cloud engineering looks like at an enterprise level.